One of the most important aspects of Guild Wars 2 is its story. Starting all the way back with the personal story in 2012 and heading into the upcoming Janthir Wilds expansion, the story has played an integral part of each major Guild Wars 2 release and is one of the most played pieces of content in the entire game. And today, I want to go over my personal top 10 favorite story moments across the game. Let's get started. In the number 10 spot is the finale to Flashpoint, Heart of the Volcano. A lot of people consider this to be the proper ending to Living World Season 3, with Episode 6, One Path Ends, being a bonus epilogue. But Episode 5 is action-packed with figuring out where Balthazar is, to learning more about the Druids, to exploring the entirety of Draconic Mons. And as you climb up to the top of the map and complete the rest of the episode story, you reach this moment. You begin the mission by descending down the Titan's throat, deep into the massive volcano that you have been exploring. You are working alongside Taimi and are fighting a ton of destroyers along the way, going further and further until you reach the volcano's massive magma chamber. And as you reach the magma chamber, you have a truly epic scene. Balthazar in the center using Omad's machine for his own goals against the Elder Dragon Primordis on the far end of the chamber. Where you then defeat Balthazar by killing his two beloved and famous hounds, Timar and Tegan, but Balthazar is empowered and escapes to the crystal desert while Primordis is put to sleep and Omad's machine is destroyed. Everything, the volcano environment, Balthazar and his hounds, Primordis, the importance of Omat's machine, and everything else just come together to create what is a truly epic moment. In the number 9 spot is the battle for Lion's Arch. This is a broader idea that spans multiple missions and serves as the finale to Living World Season 1. Where a lot of people have a lot of criticisms about this era of the story, but the battle for Lion's Arch is one of the strongest and better parts of the season. This moment takes almost every aspect of Season 1 and makes it all relevant while building upon it. Alongside that, we see this set the foundation for Guild Wars 2's story moving forward, especially in Season 2 and Heart of Thorns, where the interaction with Lion's Arch and the long-term impact this battle has had on the game, which can still be seen to this day in modern Lion's Arch, is cool to see. Plus, the events are decently fun. The gameplay of the missions themselves are okay, it was cool to see Dragon Watch's story progression, especially Marjorie and Casimir's, and this serves as the end of Scarlet's story, who is honestly a really cool villain. In the number 8 spot is fighting Balthazar throughout the Path of Fire story. There are three unique moments throughout the story that build off of each other and the events prior to each battle. The first is during Act 1 of the Path of Fire story, and this is our first big interaction with Balthazar ever since we fought him during Living World Season 3, where basically we don't have a lot of hope in beating him, but we do try our best. Where the Dragon Vlast sacrifices his life in order to save us. The second time is at the very beginning of Act 3 of the Path of Fire story, as the story escalates where you get ambushed by him atop the Pillars of Supremacy, and while we didn't have much hope in beating him during our first encounter, we really don't during the second, as he is able to take Orion prisoner and literally kills you. Like, straight up kills you, and you are sent to the Domain of the Lost and have to work your way back to the Realm of the Living. And then the third and final encounter is at the end of Act 3, at the end of the Path of Fire story, after all the various events that have occurred throughout the entire story, where there are a lot of different factors that go into this fight, but you have a massive two-part fight where you work alongside Orin in order to defeat Balthazar. And during this battle, you are at the top of King Joko's Sky Garden, with two massive Joko statues staring down at you. Oh, and the massive Elder Dragon Krakatork is hanging out there as well, with a massive Brandstorm. All three of these encounters are really cool in their own way, and they each build off of each other to make a really great experience throughout the story. I am so excited to be able to get to this point in the story in my Let's Play series because I am so excited to play through these boss fights. But the final one in particular is just so epic as you are fighting Balthazar, which is an incredible fight in and of itself, but you also have the influence of both Palawa Joko and Krakatorg, who are the two other major antagonists of the Path of Fire expansion. In the number 7 spot is returning Glint's egg to Tarir. When we look at the entire Elder Dragon saga, aka the first 10 years of Guild Wars 2 story, that technically started all the way back with the Eye of the North expansion and in the original Guild Wars, we see one incredibly important overarching story beat with the entirety of this story, Orin. Where you have the personal story, which is kind of separate from this, but we see Orin's egg recovered by the Zephyrites during the Boomer World Season 1, to coming under turmoil in Season 2, to being delivered to Tarir in the Heart of Thorns expansion, to hatching in Season 3, to growing in Path of Fire, to ascending in Season 4, to Orin finding her place in the Icefield Saga, to her ending the Dragon Cycle in End of Dragons. 
but one of the moments from this entire cycle that stands out more to me than most of the others is returning the egg to Tarir, where I love the story mission where we are being chased by Fallon. It's honestly kind of scary, especially when you are newer to the game, and I love the entire obstacle course that you have to do here. But I also love the story mission in Tarir itself, where you are going through the various exotic challenges, which are honestly decently unique and fun, even if the bunny challenge was less popular. But I love the hints to Suwon during this mission, exploring Tarir in depth, and fulfilling this part of Glenn's legacy. In the number 6 spot is the beginning of the Secrets of the Obscure expansion. This is the most recent story moment on this list, but there are just so many elements to the start of this expansion that make it stand out for me a lot. I love the beginning where you go atop the tower and are basically doing reconnaissance, but you are doing it in the dead of night. Where nighttime in Guild Wars 2 isn't super dark, but the developers made this story mission very dark, which I deeply appreciate. But then we see the Cryptus for the first time and are like, what the heck is going on? And then we see the Astral Ward for the first time and don't know whether or not we should trust them. But then chaos ensues and we are sucked into Nios and are at the Temple of Febe, where we have an incredible moment where Cirrus, an absolutely incredible demon, is basically hunting us and we fight him at the same location we return to at the end of the story to fight him again. And I just love the aesthetics of the Temple of Febe, as well as the vibes of this entire mission. But then a portal appears and we desperately dive through it to wind up in the Skywatch Archipelago, where we have surprise after surprise after surprise. There's a living Rasat here, Soja is here, there's a living dwarf here, Galrath is an undead and is here as well, and just so many other things about different characters and the entire area around here that just make it an overwhelming moment that I loved experiencing. And the number 5 spot is Deepest Secrets. This is chapter 7 of the Ender Dragon story where you are going down into the Yang Reactor. For this is just an incredible mission, but I love it for two major reasons. First is the environment of the mission, where we are in this massive Canthan facility that is super cool, it is deep underwater, and you have to take an elevator to get down into it, where you go on a tour around this massive facility, and every single room is just super cool, and I love the aesthetics of the entire facility. But the second major reason why I love this mission is the story going on here because we see the Elder Dragon Suwon for the first time, and this mission is the turning point for the Ender Dragon's expansion, because Anka activates the extractor against Suwon, and long story short, everything goes downhill from here. But the entire reactor starts to melt down, you have a cool cutscene where Anka kills my Trin, and then you have to escape the facility via escape pods, and are basically a fugitive now because everyone thinks everything is your fault. We're all in all, just a fantastic moment in the Ender Dragon story that has some great vibes. And the number 4 spot is the ending of the Ender Dragons expansion, where there is just so much stuff going on during this moment of the expansion that come together beautifully. Where the final moments of the Ender Dragons expansion marks the end of the dragon cycle that I was talking about in the number 7 spot, where the entirety of the Guild Wars 2 story up to this point was building up to this point. So many different moments, so many years of story, so many different content releases all lead to this moment. And because of that, it is a truly legendary moment, where from a spectacle point of view, it is pretty cool. Orin basically gives us a lot of her powers, where we essentially become one, which means we become super powerful, where we are fighting against the Dragon Void and eventually defeat the threat that we could see was unraveling Teria. After defeating the Dragon Void, we unfortunately have to say goodbye to Siwan, where Orin takes all of her powers, now having the powers of all the different dragon magics flowing through her. We then have a nice moment in Arborstone with all the different characters we interacted with throughout this expansion, and then we return to Divinity's Reach to have a very nice moment with Dragon's Watch, where we can see Marjorie and Casimir become engaged, which is just a really fun story beat that has basically been going on alongside the entire Elder Dragon saga, beginning all the way back in Season 1. So all in all, the end of the Ender Dragon's expansion is just phenomenal. And the number 3 spot is a very specific thing that does have a decent amount of buildup, but it is Bangar leaving the Shiver Peaks Pass. This happens at the very end of the Bound by Blood prologue chapter to the Icefruit Saga, where the entire prologue is basically building up to this moment where everything is slowly becoming more and more tense, where we begin to learn more about the Renegades and various warbands from the various legions had left the festivities that were happening in Grothmar Valley to go into the Shiver Peaks, where we follow after Bangar and discover that he is planning to attempt to tame the Elder Dragon Jormag, so that Bengar can use them in order to control all of Tyria. And this moment leads into the rest of the Icewood Saga, and I love the build up throughout the prologue and the whole expedition into the Shiver Peaks Pass. But the moment that I particularly love is the cutscene where we discover that Bengar stole Bram's bull. We see the speech that Bengar is giving, 
We see a massive army of char following Bingar further into the Shiver Peaks, and we can't do anything but watch as the bridge in front of us is destroyed and we are attacked by a massive ice elemental. In the number two spot is Dark Rhyme Delves, where this is part of Visions of the Past, Steel and Fire, which is an incredibly unique story update and is just a phenomenal part of Guild Wars 2's story, where I really, really hope we get to see more stories like this in the future, where the first part of Steel and Fire is the massive strike mission, where the Steel Warband is navigating through to the Biora Pass, and you got the Stone Summit Dwarves and whatnot. But the second part is how you play as Ryland and are running through Dark Rhyme Delves with Bangar. Where playing as Ryland or a Char Soldier in the previous story step is just super cool, but the vibes of this entire area are incredible, and the story going on here is phenomenal, where I absolutely love the interactions between Bangar, Ryland, and Almora, where we learn a lot from this entire mission and learn how Almora died since we found her body in a previous story release but did not know the cause of death until we experienced it here. Raomora is my favorite story character in all of Guild Wars 2, and it was a real joy to me to be able to experience her being so cool in this mission, even if it is the conclusion to her story. But now for the number one spot, for my favorite story moment in all of Guild Wars 2, and it just has to go to fighting Paula Wajoko. Returning to Living World Season 4, we can see the entire season split into two major parts, and while the parts overlap, the second half is related to Krakotork, and the first half is related to Paula Wajoko where after the events of the Path of Fire story, we begin to marshal our forces against Paula Wajoko, who is one of my favorite villains in all of Guild Wars 2. Where there's just a lot of story going on leading to this moment where we attack Gandara, the Moon Fortress. Where this entire mission into Gandara is really cool as we fight against some of the most powerful awakened while also learning about the depravity of Joko. But the best part of this entire mission is the moment at the end of the mission where we have the showdown with the Scourge of Abbey himself where the fight itself is honestly pretty fun and is one of my favorite boss fights in the game, where we have some fun interactions with Bram as he is redeeming himself as an ally, but the best part is after we defeat Joko, where we have one of my favorite cutscenes in the entire game. I remember just absolutely losing it when I watched this cutscene for the first time, and I still love watching it to this day, where Paula with Joko is just an absolutely phenomenal character, and the ending of this cutscene with Orin is just fantastic. With everything combined, the incredible character, the amazing build-up, the fun mission itself, and the incredible cutscene, fighting Paolo Wojoko is my favorite moment in the Guild Wars 2 story. And that's my list. I hope you enjoyed. Guild Wars 2 story is massive with so many different cool parts that you could pick from to call your favorite. So let me know what yours is down in the comments, and if you enjoyed this video, consider watching my top 10 story characters video, or if you want to learn more about Paolo Wojoko, watch my story video dedicated to him. I hope you all are taking good care of yourselves. Have a good one, everyone.